All right, three, two, one. Welcome to my A-Frame tutorial series. Let's start with the two types of virtual reality. You've got native VR and then you've got web VR. Native VR requires you to have a special device and a special app developed on a special framework. Oculus is a really good example of this. The thing about that is that it's really, really inaccessible to ordinary people like me. I am a really poor freelancer. I can't afford a $360 Oculus device. But the great thing is we've got another thing now called web VR. Web VR is VR applications that are run on the browser which means that anyone and everyone with a device that has a browser on it can access and use that application and all you need is say something like a Google card box. Sorry. You need something like a Google cardboard. There's lots of frameworks that you can use to create web VR applications. Some of them are React 360, A-Frame, 3JS. For this tutorial, we will be using A-Frame. I'm just gonna teach you how to set up the environment. And then on the next one, I'll teach you the basics and so on and so forth. Now that we know a little bit about A-Frame, let's get started. The thing with A-Frame is that you need to serve your assets over HTTPS. There's two ways I'm going to show you of how to do this. For those of you who may be experienced programmers and prefer your own local development environment, then you want to install something like XAMPP. If you've got XAMPP already, then that's great. You can just keep using it as you are. Otherwise, what you can do is you can go on XAMPP's website. XAMPP download, you just Google that and it's the first one here. You just click on it and I've just downloaded an arbitrary version um, which is the one right here. I don't know why I didn't download the latest one but anyway it still works so just um, get that going, install it as you normally would. When you have XAMPP finally installed you need to start the server. So in order to start the server what you need to do is you need to go to your applications folder or if you're on Windows just do something that's um, that's equivalent to that. So go to application under XAMPP. Um, you want to open your XAMPP manager and if you're on um, Mac it'll prompt me to enter your password so you just do that and then you just wait for the manager to open. Manage servers and what you want to do is go to Apache web server and you want to start it and now it's running. You got the green light there and what you want to do is you want to go to your browser There it is, and I want to restore my pages, sure. Uh, I had to restart my computer before, which is why it's asking me that. Um, anyway, what you want to do is you want to check that it's working. So you go to localhost, and voila, there, your XAMPP server is working. Um, okay, so then how do you get your code running on this? What you want to do is you want to go to htdocs, this is where your code is going to live and just create a new folder, you can call it A-Frame and as you can see here, I've already got an untitled.html and that is because I'm too lazy to rename my work. Um, but you basically want to do the same thing, so just go to a text editor like Sublime. You don't need anything fancy here. If you've got VS Code, then good for you. I've already got my code opened over here. Um, what you can do is you just get the folder, even if it's empty, and you drag it into Sublime like so, and then you get something like this. Um, so I've already got something here and in order to see it on the br browser, yeah, you can just click on this, double click on your file and it goes straight to Chrome. But as you can see, um, there's some stuff that's missing and that's because it's just looking on your computer and not using um, the XAMPP server, which would actually serve this over HTTPS. Um, so I know you don't have any thing to show right now but that's okay just create a file and then make the ex extension .html and you're good to go and when you want to run it all you have to do is you just go localhost uh, dash your folder name so for me what would that be that would be um, a frame easy so localhost slash a frame slash untitled.html and voila all my assets are there 
So again, to reiterate, if you've got assets like images or uh, whatever you've got, you have to absolutely have to serve it over HTTPS or it will not show up. Um, the first time I learned this I of course didn't know that because I didn't go through the documentation properly and I spent hours trying to figure out why my assets won't load and that is simply the problem. Um, anyway, avoid my mistakes, don't do it folks. Um, okay, so that is if you want to have a local server, but for the sake of this tutorial, I know some of you um, could be struggling with this installation or whatever. So for that purposes, we are gonna use something called Glitch. And Glitch is basically an online tool where you can just type your code in line and then um, it shows your output, which is something like this on the side of your window. So let's check out Glitch, glitch.com and you i'm already signed in but what you have to do is just create a new account on glitch.com um, i'll just quickly take you through it um, not the whole thing of course because i think it's pretty self-explanatory glitch.com type it on on the browser uh, wait for it and just join glitch it's free I use my GitHub account to sign in, but I know most of you are starting and probably don't have one. So just use any of these, create an account, and you are set to go. Before I end this tutorial, I'm just going to show you around Glitch so you kind of have an idea of what we're going to be working with in the next tutorial. Um, so this is the home page. I've already got a few projects here, so I'm just going to click into it, and the UI is just really, really cute. <laughs> it's just got all these really um, really cute cartoons and it just it doesn't take things too seriously so it's pretty fun to be on and learn um, so this is the code that we're gonna follow along in the next tutorial I'll just give you a little sneak peek you just click on it it shows you a preview you can go edit the project wait for it to load and voila, here is the code and you can show the outputs right here. Go show and I like to have it next to the code just because, you know, you don't have to keep switching and everything. Um, but what's really cool about this is it just lets you edit inline and you can see the results straight away. Like for example, I want to move this, this floating box so it's just um, on the floor. As you can see, it's... Um, a little bit more elevated off the ground. So I'm just gonna change the position a little bit, make that instead of two, I'm gonna make that zero arbitrarily. And look, it is <laughs> all the way on the floor. It's a little bit sunk, but um, yeah, you get, you get the point. You get the point. I'll just change it back to one because it's kind of bothering me a little. But yeah, there we go. You are all set up and ready to go. That's all you need to set up an environment to start using A-Frame. And with that, I'll end the lesson for now. If you're ready to move on to the next part of the tutorial, just click here and I'll see you next time.